if you're one of the students that purchased the Pearson Cisco Packet Tracer for CCNA textbook that Ronnie Wong and I authored for you, you probably realize that some of the chapter review exercises get pretty difficult. In fact, how we structured it was as you get deeper into the chapters of your textbook, there's less and less handholding. With that said, I would like to go ahead and review these chapter reviews with you and basically give you a solution guide for each of the chapter reviews here on YouTube. Note this is going to be beneficial for those students that don't even have the textbook that may want to brush up on their hands-on as they are getting ready for their CCNA, CCNA exam. Well, with no further ado, let's jump into the very first chapter review. It is chapter four, and I'm going to go ahead and set up my packet tracer uh, this way. There's lots of things that students do to go through these graded chapter reviews, but one nice thing that you can do is just arrange everything on one screen. So notice we can put the instructions that we need to solve over on the left and we can put our topology on the right and this simulates the CCNA exam pretty well as far as how it is laid out as well. So notice I can come in and with my old eyes I need to zoom in on these devices as much as possible. Notice pro tip, uh, I mentioned this in the textbook, but remember you can always move these things around so you can see the labels better. All right, well, our chapter four review is pretty darn easy and straightforward because it's one of the first chapters of content in your textbook. So sure enough, all we need to do is give some initial configuration to R1 and R2 in this topology, and let's go ahead and get started with R1. So I'm gonna click on R1, and sure enough, there is no router name on this router. And shame on me, I need to review everything we're doing here from a CCNA perspective. So I'm gonna start out by running the enable command to get into privilege mode. And then I need to give R1 a host name. So I'm gonna go into global configuration mode, the full command being configure terminal, and I'm going to issue the host name R1 command. And we can see that takes effect right away. So there's our verification that we have set the host name to R1. Now we need an enable secret password of lab pass one. Is that case sensitive? You better believe it is. And now we are asked to go to the interface gigabit zero slash zero, and we need to enable it. So we do a no shutdown in order to enable that interface. And then we are asked to give a description. Link to SW1 is the description we are asked to provide. Is this case sensitive? Well, we're gonna assume that it is. And so I will enter that in all case, just in case the grading engine is looking for case sensitivity there, and I'm pretty darn sure it is. So if in doubt, match the case when you're in your CCNA exam, of course. All right, now I'm going to end my configuration and we remember we need to do a copy run star of the configuration to save it. In your exam environment, if you wanna do the right shortcut, which is actually a shortcut for write memory, it's just WR, you are free to do that. So if you're a WR shortcut person for saving your configuration in the exam, no problem, you're gonna be able to do that. All right, well, we've got one more device to configure here in this first chapter review. And notice we're gonna be doing a very similar approach. I'm gonna log into R2 with enable, or log into privilege mode, I should say. We're gonna do our conf T shortcut, and I'm gonna say host name is R2. And this enable secret, watch out here, it is a different enable secret, it's lab pass two. That's right, and then interface gig zero slash zero, we're gonna do our no shutdown, 
and we are going to then go ahead and provide the description of link to SW1. Notice I started to make a typo there and caught it. We're going to save our configuration and guess what? A very simple little lab, but we uh, should have achieved 100% there, I think. And notice I didn't have to do a lot of verification because the verifications like the line protocol and the physical status of the interface changing to up, those gave me the verifications I needed as I was going through this lab exercise. Yeah, so I think we are good. I'm gonna go ahead and close the configuration windows and we are gonna use the check results button inside of our packet tracer lab to make sure we completed the activity without losing any points. Remember folks, if you want to see what was graded, you can do that on the assessment items area. And this of course becomes critical should you have not completed the exercise successfully and you want a little hint as to what the heck went wrong so you can see where the scoring was incorrect. By the way, if you did miss something, you can always go in and, of course, correct that. So I could pull up my topology once again. Let's see how we uh, get to that. I think I need to close this window. Yeah, that's right. Minimize this and you could go in here and fix anything that's wrong. And then you could just open it up and check the results again. So have no fear, should you make a mistake, you're gonna see that that item didn't grade correctly and you'll have a chance to go in and correct your results. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if the CCNA exam worked that way and when we were in the hands-on lab simulations inside the exam, wouldn't it be nice if they graded us and gave us a chance to do better? I will say this though, let's keep this in mind, the exam simulations are going to be multiple points associated with them, partial credit. So at the very least, get in there and do the tasks that you can complete and make sure you save those configs so you can at least obtain some of the points inside the simulation in your exam. Well, that was an easy one. That was chapter four, but I'm going to be reviewing with you the 100% configurations of all of the many chapter review labs. So I hope to see you soon. Thanks so much for watching.